going? Yeah, we're done. What's that mean? I don't have to say it. <laughs> Look at you guys. Oh. Get the energy going. Knock out a good 25. Let's see it. You guys should be used to it by now. What's this, week eight, week nine? <laughs> minimum of 25 I said right everybody get over 25 so now that's the standard right the standard is going above and beyond okay week after week we go over a lot of different themes we talk about breathing for performance uh, cold therapy mantras uh, attacking or uh, identifying limiting beliefs fears right brainwashing Morning routine, evening routine. At some point, you guys start putting everything together, quantify everything, and all the different components. See where you're doing well, see where you're not doing well, and come up with a plan to fix it. Right? There's always something that can be improved. Right? The Indy cars go faster a little bit every year. Right? So, today's a work day. How do we do that? Okay, guys. Then, anybody know what this word means? Raise your hand. Half. Guys, is one of our core values. Other than my family. Yep, knows all. Knows them all. You guys know all six core values by chance? Anyone? Got it, yeah. You all been tested this week, right? I was a hundred dollars <laughs> for every class. Yeah, I was talking about yesterday. I was brushing my teeth last night. Going. <laughs> yeah, I'll for a hundred dollars so anybody can get them all. Team. Teamwork. Discipline. Yep. Horizon. Yep. Yep. Enjoyment. Yep. And the first one. <laughs> yeah, I whispered it right. <laughs> Kaizen, Japanese word you learn about it in business school. If you talk about people that learn uh, Six Sigma for making operations faster, uh, Kaizen's approach is looking for small incremental improvements in everything you do. Ball State's motto is one at a time, right? One percent better at a time. That's the exact same thing. Where can I get just a little bit better, right? I break it up in two things. One's the head and the rest is the body, okay? We need to hunt weaknesses on the head and the body, all right? In the head, so start with how you put things mentally, how smart you are at what you need to do, and how you interact with your teammates. And teammates mean just the people you work with. So socially, how do you do? Physically, how do you train, how do you feel, and how do you fix yourself? How do you recover, all right? If one of these is a limiting factor, we talked about limiting beliefs last week, if we, one of these is a limiting factor, you're gonna be held back, you can't really progress too far forward. Limiting factor, I'm playing football, I'm, I don't have my left arm, I'm not gonna be able to play very well. I'm probably not on the team, maybe the kicker. Right? Only one baseball player played with one arm, Jim Abbott, right? Mm -hmm. So not many people are, are playing with missing an arm. If you have a bad mental approach, you make bad decisions, you get arrested, you're probably not playing. Even if you're great in the other five areas. If you are really strong, but you're always out partying, you never recover, you're probably not playing very well. If you do everything right with your body, but you suck with your teammates, your coaches, your support staff, that's going to be a limiting factor. You're going to get beat that way. All that's great, but you don't learn the playbook. You can't play well, right? Somewhere along the line, something is a little bit weaker than the other. You got to fix the weak link for you to improve. Here's how we do it. All right. You take this hunt 
weaknesses approach to all of it systematically four times a year. Four times a year, so every quarter, all right? Four times a year. I wrote it out for you guys. You're gonna do a SWOT analysis, another business school approach. Very basic, SWOT, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So we're gonna go through all six categories, all right? And we're gonna take a few minutes for each category and just kind of brainstorm what are your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So on the mental side, are you disciplined? Do you show up all the time to everything you need to do? Are you a little bit early? Sisu, that grit, that toughness, that not giving up, seeing tasks through to completion, do you run all the way through the line? If there's 30 seconds left in the wide, do you keep going all the way to the end? If you're doing accessories and you got five or eight reps left in the tank, do you go all the way to that five or eight reps? Do you do more than the minimum 25 push-ups we start with? Yeah, right? Enjoy me. You having a good time with this? Because if not, that's going to be a limiting factor. I hate this. I hate this. I just, you're done. This won't work. Okay? Can you focus and you deal with stress? Right now, not too bad. Fourth and one. How are you then? <laughs> Big deadline coming up. You got a series of, ta of tasks. Do you have processes for your scenarios? I don't know how to set up for this. Or if I get beat today, how do I, how do I respond back? And then the last one, do I actually have a competitive advantage? Another business school definition. A competitive advantage. That's a component where I'm so much better than everybody else, I can apply this and then beat you. Right? What's Walmart's competitive advantage? Price. Yes. price. They are the lowest price. That's how they win. The Saks Fifth Avenue and Tiffany's the same? <laughs> no. They're some of the highest prices, highest quality. Right? What we see David Goggins' competitive advantage is? His mental toughness. Mental toughness. I will take your soul, I will fucking bleed to death to die to win. Right? So you're not beating him that way. In any of these areas, if you have a competitive advantage, you then dominate the competition. Some people get picked up in the draft just because they are the fastest in the draft. They might suck other wells, but they are the fastest. They're probably still getting picked up. Right? This is an area where you can find something that you're amazing at, outperform everybody, separate yourself, you're that unique, you will have a job. They, you will be hired. If you do this better than anybody else, you will have it. So in any of areas, you find a competitive advantage, that last bullet point, nurture that, grow that, dominate that, embrace that, love that. Take a few minutes, a few minutes right now. Write down, what's the strength or two that you have? What's the weakness you have, two or you have in, on the mental side? Where are some opportunities? Where are some threats? If you're not sure, spit something out. Run it by me. I'm right here. Let's, let's answer questions right now. This is going to be more of a workshop interactive piece. Okay? There's a page for each component. There is. So you don't have to put everything on the first page. Knowledge will be next. Page two will be knowledge, right? Then we'll hit teammates, interacting with people. Training, nutrition, and then picture yourself for recovery. So each page, we're gonna do the SWOT analysis for each one. And I have an example at the end of some, just some information that'll help you with the training piece. The mental piece, all of it. You wanna share anything right now? Uh, hey, this is a strength, and hey, I'm not sure, is this a weakness? Where would I categorize this? What would be an opportunity here? Say you're moderately disciplined, you show up to things, you give kind of a half effort, maybe a 70% effort. The opportunity is to raise that 70 to 95. I'm always a half hour early. I get extra help from the coach or from my boss, from my colleague. I get extra treatment by the staff. That extra discipline is an opportunity for me to get better in those 30 minutes. I'm there early all the time. That's my opportunity. The threat is all everybody else in my position group is already doing that. They're already ahead of me here. They had competitive advantage over me. I dropped out of the depth chart. That's the threat. Okay. Mentally, they're, they're uh, more squared away. They're tougher. I don't finish off blocks. I don't hit deadlines. I'm disorganized. All those weaknesses, the threats are you don't get promoted. 
we have interns here. They have opportunities to get hired. The threat is that if they don't do well, once their internship is done, see you later, don't come back. You can come back as a member, but we're not hiring you. Hmm. You know, if you're a GA for a football team in college and you sucked, you're not being hired. That's the threat. You got a 2.0 GPA in school. No degree, different kind of job, right? That's the threat. Hey, I, I don't know what I don't know. So I'm just not even sure. The weakness is I'm just, I'm not sure. I need some help. That's okay. Write that down. I just don't know. If that's the case, see me afterwards. We'll set up a time. We'll meet one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not sure how to do this. Can you help me out? Walk me through it. That's okay. I don't have all the answers. I got a lot of resources. I have, I have some experiences. I can help you. I will help you. Thoughts, feedback. Yes, no, can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> We're diligently writing. We're diligently writing. Filling out our papers. Good. Threats. That's an interesting. Right? If you perform very poorly okay. in an area, is that going to impact you personally, okay. professionally? Gotcha. Okay. I was looking at it in a different way. Okay. <laughs> so if you're always slow and you miss everything, right? And you work with me with marketing, the threat is that you get fired. Sure. Right. It's okay if you don't know. You guys want to move on to the next page? Mm -hmm. We can come back to this later. You can spend the rest of the afternoon working on these things. <laughs> Knowledge. If you don't read and study and learn from people outside of school, you can't win. You can't. Even the people that hate studying the playbook, they still have to hit the minimums. Right? And what? If you're here doing more than the 25 push-ups, you're not here to do the minimums. Right, we talk about that, what level are you? Are you the pretender, are you the college player, the pro player, or the statue, the statue they build of you? Whatever place you have yourself on that Mount Rushmore of you, you can't get there without constantly reading, studying, and learning. That's why, why you're here today. In your industry, if it's football, if it's teaching German in school, if you start forgetting certain things, losing things, you're gonna get beat. Are you smart at living on your own? What happens when you go to live on your own, right? I remember living with the kids in college, they went a whole semester with ramen noodles and beer. That's not performing at a high level, they don't even know what to do, they don't know how to, there's a kid from here, from this gym, went to college, great family, first day there, called home to mom, hey, how do I do the laundry? So if you, if you don't have the knowledge and life skills that slows you down, you're not you're inefficient somewhere, or you just sucked, well guess what? That part's gonna be weak, you're gonna be behind other folks. The knowledge piece also kind of permeates to everything else. Can you learn how to get better mentally? Can you learn how to work better with your teammates? Can you learn how to eat better, learn how to train better, learn how to recover better? This piece, the knowledge part, the learning, applies to all of their five areas. Do you have a competitive advantage here? I'm constantly reading, listening to books on tape, watching other speakers, talking to other coaches, going on site, and then I put all of the information out in my lab, which is my gym, see how you guys respond, see how my coaches respond, see how the other adult athletes respond, teams respond. I get that day to come back, I adjust, Boom, moving forward. Where are you strong there? Where are you weak? And did, if the answer is I don't know what I don't know, that's okay, write that down, I'm just not sure. Opportunities, yeah, I have an opportunity. I could spend a half hour every morning and get smarter in some area. There's an opportunity. I can improve my evening routine, get smarter there. Where's the threat? I don't know how to do this, I get, I get blown by. My talent will get me so far, I don't learn how to recover, I keep blasting myself. 
Next thing you know, I'm injured. How do I come back from injury? Is injury almost guaranteed in sports at a high level? That's something all the time. By the time, yeah, by the, time the end of the season rolls around and you're starting, you got to be banged up, right? I got a shoulder. I kind of rolled my ankle. Even just a rolled ankle. Groin hurts. The dude smacked his thumb with a hammer. That wasn't even playing football. That's outside, right? It's an accident. It's a mistake. Things happen. I put my finger through the spokes on a bike once. Mm. Write those things down. Think about the knowledge piece. Think about Luke Keekley. Came out of Boston College, Pro Bowl every season. If you watch the Carolina Panthers camp, your position coach plays defense, linebacker. The position coach goes over what your, your, your assignments are. The D coordinator goes over the overall scheme. The last few years, Luke is running the meetings for the position coach and sometimes for the D coordinator. He studies so much, he knew it all backwards and forward. He's running the meetings. Is that competitive advantage? You have the player running the meetings. That player with that smart is on the field. If you're always smart enough to be in the right position, is it easy to make the tackle? Right? Competitive advantage. All right, next piece. Teammates. Are you sound? with your job or your position group. You work well. Jen's got teammates. Some of them are international, speak with different accents, different capabilities, different divisions. Has to be able to work with them. Six kids living at home, has to live with me. <laughs> How do we work together? Can that slow you down? Can that project pull you forward? Does my wife help pull me forward? Absolutely. How are you within your department? Do you get your department better? How about with your boss? Your boss is trying to get the most out of his team. That's your position coach, your D coordinator. How are you with them? Are you seeking that person out? How about if you're on offense or defense? How are you with the entire group? How about with your family and friends? What are your teammates like? Are your teammates the ones always saying, hey, let's stay out one, two, three o'clock in the morning and smoke weed? If that happens. They always say, you want to see your future, show me your five people you hang out with the most. You hear that all the time, right? We were at breakfast last week with Jack, and I go, he's talking about playing football in high school. He goes, man, if I just knew then what I know now. Where every kid, every adult says that, right? Man, when I was his age, if I were his age, he's only been gone a year from high school. If I just knew then what I know now, right? Well, someone else has the information of where you want to be in four or five years. Find that person, ask him questions. Ask her questions. Ask me questions. He knows these things where you want to go because you told him or her, right? I want to go there. What do you know? Pour that into me. How about your support group? Do you have a support group? Do you have a devotional group? You're spiritual, right? For some of us, just going to church, the people they meet at church. These are all your teammates. You develop this, this this village that you live with, whether it's personally, professionally, spiritually, and you're surrounded by like-minded people that are aspiring to greatness and get the most out of their time here, and that's who you hang out with, you got a shot. You hang out with a bunch of dumb fucks. <laughs> it's pulling you down. You have allies, not just friends. Jim, you fucked up here. You ate like shit all week. Dude, you're late to practice, man. Hey, you're late to this meeting, man. Hey, you don't know your assignment, man. When you miss your assignment, it hangs me out the dry. What about the noise? The social media noise? My friends, hey, they're doing this. They're posting on Snapchat, this or this and this, right? Hey, look at this, this is funny. Let's say you actually get to be good and your name's in the publication. Heaven forbid ESPN talks about you, right? They love Belichick and they hate him on the same episode. How do you handle that? Do 
continue to listen? What's your process? Where are you strong? Where are you weak? What opportunities do you have and what threats do you have? All right, that's all the head. Okay? The body, same deal. There's training, there's how you feel yourself. We talked about that. We just wrote for cold therapy, touch off about shakes, and then there's recovery. While you guys are going through those last three pieces. I'm gonna go over some other notes while you're thinking about this. Last March, I went to an old school iron in Cleveland, talked to that the gym about how they run things. Uh, <laughs> they got 100,000 square feet in their gym. For, for comparison's sake, this is 10. <laughs> they have 100, okay? Awesome. It's amazing. It's gorgeous. They have everything. They do everything. From there, I head down to Ohio State. I meet with, uh, Mickey Marotti and his staff spent all day there, strength and conditioning team for the football team. And then I go over to Westside Barbell. I spent hours with them, just question after question after question. Most of them talking around process and culture. Process and culture, right? Some thoughts, I go to, I'm talking to them uh, at Ohio State. I go, what's your main mantra? And the words fight written on the wall. You wanna fight at everything, right? I want to fight for this rep, I want to fight for that yard, I want to fight for improvement, I want to fight in the classroom. Four to six seconds, A to B. That's right out of Urban Meyer's book above the line. Most plays last four to six seconds, from A to B. How fast can you go four to six seconds, A to B with everything you have, right? You and your accountability training partners, they set a high and clear standard, they inspire each other and they earn it. It should be on, you and your accountability partners should be on the team's standards. The team has their standards. Those that play at the highest level have higher standards than what the team is asking for. Most kids are not men. They're too timid to lead or even try to lead. They hide and let someone else do it. Then they graduate with ever learning how. We talked about Tough Borland, Pete Werner, JT Barrett, all staples, Ohio State names. Um, I asked them who are some of those, the best guys culturally and mentally. They rattled that name off without even thinking. Boom, 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 boom. Both coaches all agreed. Each had a personal standard of excellence well beyond the teams. Spent most of the time at the facility on drills, talking with coaches, asking questions. Spent the most time studying film. They knew it like the coaches. They had a plan for their food. They brought it with them. They're going in the facility with their own little coolers, looking like a bunch of strongmen dorks walking around town, right? Same with their water. They tried to win everything. That word fight all the time. JT, quarterback, lifting all the time. Trying to get better there. They got in people's faces and they're fucking things up. It's not cool, you're hurting my chances of winning. We're the best at, take, at uh, taking what was discussed in the meetings and putting that on the field. That was huge to talk about. They spent time, 20 minutes each day, calming themselves down and visualizing the next day's tasks, usually practice. They would do that for games as well. They love the game, they love the prep. They wanted their boys to have a strong morning routine. On one wall, several walls, they would have a list by position group. Quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, Offensive line, same thing for defense. And then right there next to it, they have a chart of all the main measurables at the combine. It's your 40 time, average weight, vertical jump, broad jump, cone drill, bench press, right? And then some other things too, like back squat. Um, I forget what else. Let's say, all right, they didn't even bother saying this is what the average is at the combine. Here's one standard deviation, so about two thirds top two thirds. And then here's the top 10% number. And these are what's listed on the wall. And that's what you're trying to get. So when you go to your page, physically, on the training piece, if you can start hitting those measurables, you can start checking those boxes off. If you're saying that the, average, the, the two thirds best squat for linebacker was mid fours, the top 10% was low fives. If you hit that number, you're good there. Go check off another measurable then. 
I'm weak on broad jump. I'm weak on my, on my cone drill. Get those things checked off. You can color in the training section. See where else you're weak. Maybe I'm weak nutrition-wise. That part's not colored in. Go work on that. Okay? This gives you targets. If you don't know your targets, ask a coach. You're trying to be all state. Well, who was all state the last five years? It's listed online. Where did they go? They probably have film. Go research it. The average height for these guys was for linebackers between six foot and six four. Right? Not running the ball. Right? Not playing defensive back. At 47, how about this? Not playing. <laughs> average age is a little younger. Right? Find, you have to find the physical measurables. TJ's training is not perfect. My training is not perfect. Ohio State's training is not, not, is not perfect. They have a template. We have a template that's geared towards what the whole group is doing. We try to modify as best we can for the individuals. If you find that you're weak with your core and we're not training it enough, that's on the coach, that's on you. You have to know you and say, hey, my weakness is here, my core is weak. My neck is weak, and there's a high risk of concussions in football. My neck is weak, I need to have a stronger neck and traps to protect my head from concussions. Something small like grip strength. Kobe goes into the, play the NBA at age, uh, right after high school, so age 18, 19 years old, right? Already great. One, one area he identified immediately, he goes, my grip strength wasn't very good. Big deal. I also be able to, I need to be able to palm the ball with both hands so when I go up, I can dunk. If I got a weak grip, I can't do that as much as I like. Got to, I have to improve just a, I have to improve this, <laughs> right? I have to improve this to be an all-star NBA player. Kobe's like, I gotta fix this, right? This small little thing, this. We work out a lot of grip strength here. Maybe when you deadlift, it's heavy. You do a lot of pull-ups hanging from a bar. So from your head all the way down, where are you strong? Where are you weak? What opportunities can you get better? What threats? Here's the threat. High school kids, especially more females, if you're quad dominant because you play soccer, volleyball, basketball, and you're weak with your button hamstrings and you have a big imbalance, what's been happening a lot statistically? ACL and MCL tears. That's the threat. If you play 80 games of travel baseball bullshit and you throw all the time, the threat is that if you don't fix your shoulders and upper back, you have a shoulder tear and you're done. That's the threat, that's real. Do the same thing with your nutrition. After a while, you're gonna train so hard, work so hard, and then it becomes not the training. Can I recover? Can I go through all this shit again and recover so I can play? By the time Jerome Bettis was done, he didn't start looking at the field for practice until Thursday. Thursday, a lot of times, the walkthrough for a Sunday game. He's barely walking Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. He's kind of like moving around the field. Friday, he might put some pads on. Him. All those hits for so many years. Come Saturday, all right. Feeling pretty good. All the treatments I can get. Maybe cortisone shot. Sunday, all right, third and one. <laughs> They're giving it to the bus up the middle. Right, that's the deal. But can you even recover? There's an artwork there. Now I don't even know how to recover. I don't even know what I don't know there. What's that even mean? Step some time to meet with me. Your approach in these areas, if you go to the part on training, I wrote it out specifically. But for all six, it needs to be thorough and exhaustive. Exhaustive. Because at some point, some little weakness is gonna show up and you're like, oh shit, I didn't know that was there. <laughs> then you got hurt. Okay? James Harrison basically made a living being the strongest guy at linebacker, right? Aaron Donald, one of the fastest and strongest, most powerful guys on the line. Going to Hall of Fame. 
Can you make a living just being the strongest and best physically? Yeah. Do you have a competitive advantage there? Yeah. Dan Marino's release, the fastest in the NFL history, no, almost never got sacked. They almost never got touched. That means never got taken down. It means no injuries. Competitive advantage. I'm so fast at my release. Where are you? Where can you create a competitive advantage that separates you from everybody else? If you're that unique, you will have work. You will be hired. You will play. Sam never turns the ball over ever. It always advances the, the quickest. They're never taking him off the field until he gets tired. <laughs> then the limiting factor is his conditioning. At the end, exhaustive and thorough, and you're applying this approach, your SWOT analysis, relentlessly, which is the mantra we use for our six core values. You're relentless, everything. At the end, the only limiting factor is one thing, and it becomes a bad marker. Okay. Two bad markers. All right. It becomes pain tolerance. How far are you willing to go mentally when you get to David Goggins level of discipline? How much time will you spend to learn and sacrifice all the things that you like for the things that you love? Would you work with all the people you can't stand, get the most out of them, you go through so much training that you are the strongest. You go through all the work to even if you have to eat when you don't want to because you have to gain weight. You go through all the deep tissue massage, the painful chiropractic work, right? How relentlessly will you apply these things and sacrifice the fun things to do the work? Because now it always comes down to how much work do you do? Not just sitting here for 30, 45 minutes on a Saturday, right? How much pain can you absorb all the drag in your life, everything that slows you down, everything you're weak at, can you still move forward a little bit and win? All those things that are holding you back, all the weaknesses, all the threats, can you keep pushing and still get the ball across the goal line? But who doesn't love Rocky, right? He's suffered and suffered and suffered, and he keeps coming up off the mat, right? Now, this becomes the, the limiting factor. I'm afraid of something. That's pain, right? But I'm moving forward. Pain tolerance. But deal with fear. It's not comfortable. You will know one way or the other. I didn't advance. I didn't get picked. I'm not playing. It'll become down that you did not absorb enough pain in one of these six areas. You said no, I'm willing to be, I don't want to be uncomfortable anymore. I'm done with my effort. Someone else wasn't. Their competitive advantage beat you and yours. That's how you got beat. I don't make the rules. <laughs> but these are the rules. All right? If you can suffer better than other folks, you will win. If you're more thorough, you have an approach, you will win. If you neglect and you don't think about it until next Saturday, you cannot win. You don't deserve it, you know it. You get up, you look in the mirror, you say, I don't have it. Then you have to decide. I didn't have it yesterday, but I could have it today. And I want to have it tomorrow, so let's focus on today. All right? Take time, fill those things out. Come see me, all right? All right, let's go out and attack the week. Let's have a good one. Let's go.